Good morning and welcome to my shed. This is a Vauxhall 1440 that I've owned for about 20 years. I'm going to make a full film about it shortly. I tried last Sunday and uh, for technical and religious reasons, which I shall explain in another film, I didn't manage to get along very well. Anyway, today's task is a bit different. You'll notice it's only got one aero screen, just for the P-Lot. The poor old passenger has to go without. Um, it's now Wednesday morning and my wife and I have been invited to a vintage car do down on the Lizard on Sunday. So I can't really expect her to do a hundred mile round trip whilst gathering flies and bumblebees in her face. So today's exercise is to make another aero screen. The reason the car only has uh, one aero screen is I only had enough material to make one at the time, or could only find enough material to make one at the time. It did originally have a full windscreen. Unfortunately, I was uh, packing down the A30 from Bodmin some months ago, and it all started coming loose. It all came loose at the top here, and I mean, some of it has all been welded up before. The frame is absolutely knackered. So um, I got home and I took the windscreen and the frame off. The frame's here, I'm working around in the shop. Um, here, this is the top bit. This is the bit that came really loose and the glass started coming out as well. So it's not so much fun at 50 miles an hour. Anyway, I got back to the shop and uh, took the windscreen and frame off and uh, went for a quick spin, goggles only, and it was so much fun. I thought, well, there's no point putting the screen back on because it's much more enjoyable without. Anyway. I had some steel channel, so I fashioned this from some steel channel um, and some macrolon. That's macrolon left over from putting some plastic windows in another shed. And I knew I had a second piece of steel channel and I could not find it anywhere. But uh, on, I think it was Monday evening, I had a ferret round in the back of the shed because I was actually having a tidy up. And amazingly, I found the other piece of channel. It looks rather like it was kept in the English Channel. I'm afraid this bit didn't look much better when I dug it out some months ago. So the plan today is to make another screen. So first things first, let's measure up. I know when I made it I used some fairly round figures. So 16 inches wide and each pillar is 6 inches high. So 16 plus 6 plus 6 Queen's birthday minus the dog's age. I think that makes 28. So, got that manky bit of steel here. Let's see how long it is. I know it's longer than 28, but there's a nasty bit of concrete stuck on one end. God knows why it's got concrete stuck on it, but there we are. I did say it had been kept in the channel. There we are, 28 is there. And actually, the manky bit starts at about 28 and a half. So, time to cut it down to size and clean it up and then we'll mark out the parts. Okay, it's now cut down to 28 inches. Um, I did record that bit in the other workshop and then I didn't turn the microphone on, so that was all a magnificent waste of time. Anyway, um, let's do this as fast as possible. Well, there we are, that was nice and quick. I actually used the flat wheel as well um, to clean it off and uh, it's come up pretty well really. Let's put that away, a rare bit of tidying up. If you feel a bit hard done by, maybe that you didn't see enough and 15 seconds of cleaning up wasn't enough, then uh, maybe I'll post the uh, paint drying later on in, in real time, just for you. You can put that in the comments if you wish. Anyway, time to mark it up. And in fact, before I do mark it up, I'm gonna round the ends off because uh, I was having a bit of think and uh, I remember I, I made in one piece and what I did was I actually I rounded the ends off here and here are, just where the end we are and then I cut a notch basically a 90 degree notch six inches in from one end six inches in from the other and sort of filed it so it's just over 90 degrees and then bent it and that gave me a, a kind of wide u-shaped piece so I don't think I actually ended up cutting it into three pieces at all but I'm sure I didn't so I think I'm going to do that again now so first things first is to round off the ends <laughs>
So the ends are now rounded off, thereabouts, there and there, and it's time to mark up where we're going to cut the V's. So, there we are, hiding in plain sight. Six inches in from each end. So, don't need to be too accurate, and then we won't be with me. Six inches there. Is there. I'm going to prove not completely cretinous, but mostly. A bit in the middle should add up to 16, and it does. That's ideal. Good. Right. I cooked up the V's freehand, but uh, I thought I'd be really, uh, really clever and use a, a school set square. It's nice to see that things from school all those years ago finally come in handy. about you, I didn't really care for school myself, it was uh, not the best of experiences. I think uh, not being at school was far more fun and I learnt a damn sight more not at school than I did at school. There we are, that's a story for another day. Good. That's the V's mark, so let's get that cut out. Well, that's the frame cut and bent to shape. Um, it might not look quite 90 degrees, but it will be 90. I'm going to jig it on a board and weld the corners up with my oxyacetylene in a moment. Um, those are my goggles and of course I've only got one spare pair of goggles and there's several million of you watching so um, I think rather than uh, some of you not watching with goggles on it would be better if we didn't film the welding. I know there's many things on the internet that can ruin a chap's eyesight but I don't want to be responsible for yours. Anyway we'll come back after the welding's done. There we are, that's the screen, uh, corners welded up, um, and they're square, check them with a square, they're pretty good, certainly with a, within a, well, less than a millimetre or 32nd of an inch or so. Um, so the next thing is to make the brackets that go here and here uh, to bolt it to the wooden frame. So they're made out of some flat steel, so we'll have a bit of a ferret round to find something useful. Right, there's the uh, frame offered up to the wooden sort of scuttle support there. So we've got to make a bracket to go down there and down there. Uh, I found a suitable piece of steel, which I've cleaned up already uh, with the flap wheel. So I'm going to cut a couple of brackets out now and uh, weld them on. I'd like to make the screen detachable, so I had a bit of a ferret round in the nut and bolt and found a couple of really nice old vintage wing nuts. So I'm going to have the studs going through here and the wing nuts going on the back at each end, there and there. I reckon that will work a treat. Brackets made and welded on. I didn't uh, move the camera next door because it just starts eating time like you wouldn't believe. Um, been trying to film and, and make stuff so I unfortunately rather left you out of it for that but let's get it mounted on with some clips now or with some uh, g-clamps and see where it goes now the car isn't particularly straight and of course the body's not entirely symmetrical so we've got to take a bit of a guess as to as to where this goes I had a bit of a mess around and the best way to line it up is actually using the bonnet hinge so I'm just gonna put a clamp here and then go down to the back of the car and peer over the top and back at the uh, line of the hinge and see if this gap here where one can poke a Thompson machine gun when being when pursuing someone um, is about equal. Let's have a look. Actually not too far off. The uh, screen needs to come about a quarter of an inch that way. So let's move it up a little bit. Somewhere like that, and have another look. Yep, 
about right. So I'm going to mark it so I know where the end is. It's a bit there. And I can actually spot drill through as well. So let's just fill this quarter inch and another drill bit because that one's not entirely satisfactory I've got some brand new drill bits in the uh, there we are new DeWalt drill bit she bought this drill bit in Home Depot in or Depot as our American friends call it in Anchorage back in February when I was doing buying drills in Anchorage well they were on offer and I happened to be in Anchorage and drill bits fit in your suitcase easily right once more onto the breach that's more like it. Ah, yes. Looks nice and square. That's drilling a hole in my finger. This wooden piece is actually a sort of engineered, one of these modern engineered floorboards. It's an oak face one, oak face this side, and God knows what on the other with lots of lamination, it was an off cut. It just seemed a very useful piece of wood to make this, this scuttle from. When I do all these modifications and things, I don't go around wrecking any original voxel bits. All the original voxel bits go in a box. And uh, yeah, as I say, if some future fruit wants to put it all back together originally, they can, or they can go as spares to someone else. Nothing gets destroyed if it's original. So this wooden piece merely screws on and bolts on to where the original windscreen pillars went. Anyway, let's let's drill this other one. Very good. It's probably lucky that other drill was bent because this new drill has done a much better job. Ah, oh. excellent. Right, well, let's go make some studs to weld in here that go through, and we can put our wing nuts on the back, and then that's the frame done. We can cut some screen out. That'll be good. We're nearly finished. These wing nuts are 3 8 width worth. I've already established that. So I need to make a couple of uh, studs with a 3 8 width with thread on one end, and then a quarter inch shoulder to go through the hole that's already in the bracket on here, through there, and then the stud can stick out a little bit, I'm just going to rosette weld the ends of the studs in, and obviously I can put the wing nut on the back of the main body of the 3 8 stud. So I'm going to cut a couple of studs out. Now the wooden bit is, is well, 20 millimetres if one must speak in filthy language, but somewhere between 3 quarters of an inch and 7 eighths. So we'll call it three quarters. We want at least the same amount going through the wing nut and the washer. And we need about another quarter inch to go through the uh, bracket and be welded, even if we end up taking a, a bit of that off with a hacksaw or a file first. Now we can always shorten things, but we can't really lengthen them. It's a bit like glides in aeroplanes. There's 101 ways to shorten the glide and very few to extend it, not without killing yourself. Um, so I'm going to cut these off two inches and then we'll cut some threads and, uh, and put the, uh, the little sort of pip on the other end for the rosette weld. So two two inch lengths of this uh, 3 8 bar. Stud complete. Um, I couldn't quite cope with all that speeded up stuff so I stopped. It takes hours to do as well so I rather need to get the job done. Um, I used the one of these nuts as a sort of guide as to how to tightly cut the thread. Um, so when you're using old nuts, secondhand stuff, always clean the nut up first with a, a tap if you've got one, and make sure it runs free and you haven't got a burr on the inside or something because it can really mess up your, your thread cutting. Because if you don't and you over tighten the die stock, you end up with a very loose thread 
which is not what we want at all. So always clean the nut up first. I think having clean nuts is probably good advice in life. Um, I finished one completely earlier, and in fact, and I didn't weld it. I said I was going to rosette weld it, and I lied. I decided that uh, it was better to probably rivet it over. So there we are, slip through. I'm going to cut the shank down rather. And I riveted it over, just peening it with a ball pain hammer, like so, diddly diddly diddly, and then brazed over the top, which is very vintage. It's a rather sort of vintage way of doing it. So it looks quite nice as well. So I'm going to do the same to this end now, and then we can go and fit the frame to the car and uh, bolt it on, see how it looks. It's all brazed and uh, cleaned up. Let's see if it fits. Funny if it doesn't. <laughs> right, it's going to be quite tight fit. There we go, on there, on there. I'm very pleased with that. Um, I'm going to stop there. We'll make a part two and uh, we can cover paint and cutting out the um, macrolon. Macrolon's meant to be bulletproof, which has uh, given me an idea. Anyway, see you again soon. Thanks for watching.